Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is John Clifford, and I've been responsible for organizing and facilitating this morning's session. Uh, we're expecting a really, really big crowd uh, this morning, so if I could ask people just to be a little bit patient, uh, and we will get things underway in the next minute or two. Thank you. OK, so good morning again to everyone. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, as I said a little bit earlier, my name is John Clifford uh, and I've been responsible for, I suppose, organizing, facilitating this morning's session on SAP success factors, time management. Uh, one of the reasons uh, we're addressing uh, this topic again, and, and uh, some of you may have been familiar with the, the last session that we did uh, not so long ago, but there's definitely a huge amount of interest. We've seen that with our customers already. Uh, I think we've seen that even with the attendance this morning. Uh, this is very much, I suppose, how SAP success factors time management can address uh, the current EU regulations uh, on time and attendance. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get things underway. Uh, we will record this morning's session, and we are happy to share that recording uh, with all of you uh, who took the time out to attend. Uh, typically also, we like to try and make these sessions as inter interactive and as engaging as possible. Uh, you'll notice on your panel that there is a Q&A tab. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, at the end of this morning's session. Uh, the one thing I would ask, uh, not just not to distract uh, our presenters, I uh, would really appreciate if you could hold off on your questions and answers to the dedicated time uh, at the end. Uh, we will get uh, through as many as we can. So with no further ado, uh, I'll just do a quick overview of what we plan on covering uh, this morning. Uh, just the agenda. So this morning we will cover uh, and Kata, you might just move the next slide. Great, thanks. Uh, I'll do quick introductions of uh, who is presenting from a Gaudi perspective. Also, we'll talk a little bit about Gaudi Group as an organization, who we are and what we do. For those who may not be familiar with it, uh, hand it over to my colleague Nikolai Yanning, our SAP Success Factors lead, who will go into a little bit more detail uh, about what is the, EU, the EU directive and what it means, I suppose, not alone for employees, but I suppose a lot of you this morning, what's relevant to organizations. And uh, we'll then hand it over to Bankat, who's our time management subject matter expert. And Kat will talk about time management and dive a little deeper into, I suppose, what that contains in the sense that we'll cover off, I suppose, quite a lot of, of the time this morning will be around time tracking. Uh, we also want to give you a demonstration of what the solution actually looks like. Important to note, this is a very, very high level overview. Uh, it'll give you a flavour, but as I will probably continue to say throughout, uh, ideally, you know, if you're looking for a more bespoke uh, demonstration, please feel free to reach out to either myself or Nikolai, and that's something that we're happy to facilitate. Uh, finally, we'll do some key takeaways, and as I said at the beginning of the call, we will do a Q&A session. So just to give those of you who aren't familiar uh, with Gaudi a quick overview, who are Gaudi, so we're an SAP uh, gold partner. We're in the space now for uh, over 25 years, uh, a little bit different to other SAP partners in the sense that we have always focused uh, on just HR. And I suppose when we talk about HR, I talk about 
uh, SAP, uh, HR, on-premise. And I suppose what's really relevant today is the cloud solution SAP success factors. Uh, founded uh, on 1999 as an organization that we're employee-owned and we'll celebrate our 25th anniversary uh, this year. We have a very strong, I suppose, Nordic Scandinavian heritage in the sense that uh, we were headquartered in Copenhagen uh, and we're still owned and managed by our original founder, the gentleman called Mr. Sarno Kopplhaus. As you can imagine, over the past 25 years, we have worked with customers in a wide variety of different industries, different sectors. Uh, listed a couple of familiar names down below. And I think what's relevant as well to this morning's call is that a few of these customers have actually successfully gone live uh, with SAP success factors time management. So what do we do? We sell licenses and subscriptions, we provide an advisory service, and we have a very, very strong uh, AV offering. That's AV, support everything around HR and HR solutions. Uh, I think it's fair to say as well, just over the past couple of years, that we have pivoted in the sense that today we really do, I suppose, look at providing our customers to what we would call total workforce management solutions. And when I talk about total workforce management solutions, I'm talking about solutions that complement SA success factors, whether that's SAP Cur, uh, Workforce Software, uh, Kronos, and more recently, uh, we've gone to market with uh, a range of solutions uh, called PXM Soft. Uh, and PXM Soft is a sister company of ours that basically, I suppose, extends and enhances uh, SAP success factors and bridges the gap around things like document management or chart and modeling and learning compliance and so forth. So that's just a quick overview, uh, whirlwind uh, overview of who we are as an organization. Uh, I think you're here to see the main event and not listen to me. So without further ado, I will hand it over to my colleague in mm -hmm. Copenhagen, Nikolai Janning, our SAP success factors lead. Good morning, Nikolai. Morning, John, and uh, thank you for the background and introduction. Uh, the next topic on the agenda is the EU Directive on Working Time. I will try to give you an overview of the drivers behind it and what it means in general terms. As we're working with time and we're working a multinational here, with customers being in Denmark, Sweden, Germany, Poland, uh, maybe other uh, places as well, and combining that with collective agreements, it will be very difficult to conclude, but I will try to give you an overview of the legislation. And then after that, we'll hand it over to, uh, to what everyone is here for, to actually see the time tracking module in use. So if we start up a bit, we will start with a legal disclaimer. And that is because, uh, as some of you know, the new requirements for registration of working time is implemented in Danish law effective from 1st of July. Gaudi is not a legal advisor, um, so the information provided in this presentation is for general information purposes only and does not constitute a legal advice. You would need to liaise with your lawyers, unions, etc in order to stay compliant given by uh, the system. So that's just uh, the overview. And as you know, working with SAP, every time SAP presents something, there's always a disclaimer. And in this case, we, we just need to say, this is general information. It is not legal advice because you need to think of your local country legislation. You need to think of your collective agreements and local policies in your organization as well. So the background for this EU uh, directive is that back in 2019, and you can change the slide, Venkat. The, so in 2019, the European Court of Justice, Justice delivered its decision in the so-called Deutsche Bank case. Uh, the Deutsche Bank case came out of a dispute between employees and Deutsche Bank. Um, just go one back. I think you changed this uh, too fast to win cut. Uh, and then we go one more forward. <laughs> it's not easy with these slides. Thank you. But the Deutsche Bank case stated that organizations need to 
measure the duration of employees working time and that was because of this dispute between employees and Deutsche Bank where employees stated that they worked more than 48 hours in average and they didn't have enough rest time and that there were no solution to record the working time. So therefore this was taken to the European court and the outcome of that was the EU working time directive. So in light of this decision, a working group was set up under uh, the Committee of Ministry of Employment within EU. And this has drafted uh, or, or this resulted in a draft bill for the EU working time directive, which is then sent out for further implementation in the member states of EU. So the high level background of the EU working time directive is to in fact ensure minimum standards to the employee's health and safety in connection with the organization of the working time in relation to daily rest, breaks, weekly rest, annual holiday and aspects in connection with night work shifts and general work patterns. So selected member states, we saw this last year in Germany, enforcing a bit more this EU working time directive. We now see it in Denmark being further implemented in local legislation as an update to the Danish Act for working hours. So the two main elements of this bill is to introduce a duty to register employees working hours on an individual level. It's not enough to say this department works for 40 hours per week, you need to do it on an individual level and it is also proposed to exempt a significant group of employees from the rules of time registration that are uh, freelancers for instance and senior management in general so if you are senior management and here we talk about c level most likely we don't talk about being a department manager or senior manager or even director. We actually talk about the very senior management. They might be exempt from this. And the EU working time directive, in fact, also states that in local agreements and collective agreements, you can also exempt people from this requirement. We see that that collective agreement and unionized employees in Denmark, for instance, they probably record that time anyway. They might be working in production, they might be hourly paid or so, so they anyway record that time. And then it's it's for the rest of us, so to say, to record the time, the ones who are working 7.4, 7.5 hours per day with no, um, no requirement of recording time there. So it is important that you consider this and you say, well, there might be some exempts, but in general, we need to record the duration of employees working time. Yes, so what it in fact means, and uh, this it might be a bit heavy, but then you can read it uh, afterwards as well. Um, and you can change the slide. Uh, so the bill implemented introduces a new obligation for the employer to implement a working time registration system, making it possible to measure daily working time. And this system must be objective, reliable and available to the employee. Furthermore, the employee needs to have access to his or her own data. And for that reason, if there's no transparency and they cannot access their data, personal data and time data, you might be subject to awarding employees a compensation. Um, furthermore, the employer must store the registered data for five years. So you need to store it. Um, some might say, well, can we have employees record their time on a napkin and hand it over in the week? Well, that might be. <laughs> um, and, and so it, it is very important that you consolidate internally and figure out what you do. What we propose is, of course, use an existing system available where you can record time, you can do absence management, and you can give employees access to their own data. 
So having that in mind, what does it in fact uh, mean specifically also for Denmark? The EU verdict requires that the employer documents the employee's weekly working time and rest time regulations. And this is shown on the next slide that in Denmark specifically, Venkat, thank you. In Denmark specifically, there is a requirement saying the employees can maximum average 48 hours per week of working time over a period of four months. There needs to be the 11 hour rule implemented for resting time, meaning if you leave work at eight o'clock in the evening, you cannot start until seven o'clock in the morning the day after. Otherwise you are breaking the 11 hour rule. There has to be breaks and there has to be a weekly day off. This is for Denmark. There might be or probably will be not the same implementation across EU member states. And again, as an organization, you would need to think of your collective agreements and general policies in place as well. So what does it mean in terms of the system? Well, you will need to implement an objective, reliable and available time recording system that makes it possible to record the daily working time for employees. This means daily working time, and it has been noted that deviations to daily working time is fine or should be fine. What does that mean? That means if the employee has a work pattern or a work schedule of eight hours per day, Monday to Friday, if they work eight hours per day, yes, that's fine, nothing to do. If they work six hours in the office from on Monday from eight to two, then they pick up the kids, feed them, put them to bed, and then work two hours in the evening, totaling eight hours. That's fine. Then probably no requirements to document that work pattern. So the daily working time in duration should be sufficient and deviations to this also called negative time recording concept in success factors should be the answer to accommodate for this. There might be for some groups, depending on local legislation and local implementation in the EU member states requirements for clock in and clock out. Remember that vacation and other lease does not count in the average working time. So you cannot have employees working 60 hours per week and then because they were on vacation, that's only 40 hours per week. That doesn't count. It is working time that counts and not leaves. Breaks. It is still unclear how it should be captured. However, rules about general rest time still applies that you are entitled to, let's say, 30 minutes of break after six hours of work and 45 minutes after nine hours of work or whatever the local legislation based on the EU working time directive dictates. So we, ha we have been doing this for, for some of our customers in Germany and Denmark already. We see that timesheet which is a part of your employee central license is actually sufficient to cater for these requirements. But we would like to give you an overview of the general time management concept. What is it? What is the solution? What are the components in the solution? So you can actually see how does it play out in uh, in the system. And I guess that's why a lot of people are here to actually see the system and not to uh, hear about uh, legislation. So we see that the EU working time directive drives adoption into success factors. And yes, success factors is a compliant solution once you have implemented the necessary time components in your instance. So with that uh, background, uh, Vinkat, I will hand it over to you for a dive into time management. So uh, please take it from here. Thank you. Thanks, Nikolai. Hi everyone, I'm Venkat and uh, apparently I'm the chosen one today to convince you why SAP Success Factors is the best product in the market. Uh, and as someone who's practically got a Success Factors logo tattooed on my brain by now, I might just get carried away and claim and declare that SF is the only product that's capable in the market right now. So hang tight, let's quickly have a overview of the time management solution. 
So SAP success factors, what do we have? Okay, so the time management solution in success factors offers us two different options. One, we call it as the option which comes with the employee central module. If you have implemented success factors and if you have known success factors for a while, you will know the core module, which is called as employee central, comes with the capability of a time solution in it. And we also have a new module in the market right now, which is called as time tracking. And the aim today for us is to clearly understand what's the difference here and what do we get when we go for the employee central time management solution and what is the difference when we buy additional licensing when we opt for the time tracking module. That's it. Let's go on to certain statistics, which is interesting to get some flavor on what's going on. So currently, as we can see, there are. 9 million active users using the core system and the functionalities of. Time and there are 200 plus countries who are using the same, which means it is compliant in most of the countries and we can see the adoption from the stats here. And success factors time tracking as a module. Being fairly new to the market, it still has 600 plus customers, 3 plus million users active already and 75 plus countries implementing the same. So which is a good number to have to start with. And we all know. That success factors offers a comprehensive solution which is secure connected and a world class platform of course for a streamlining the time and attendance management solution, right? So what makes it better? Uh, the important highlights to note would be the mobile first approach, I would say. Uh, the current trend requires we as employers or the employees to have access through mobile and do their day to day activity through mobile. So with that. We can have a intuitive experience for both employees and managers. And moving on quickly. What is time management? So in time management, like I told you, we have a module with employee central, which is called time off and absence. This is an absence module which allows you to record absence. And next we have is the attendance module, which is time tracking on top of it. And then we will also see how we can then integrate it to payroll system for the payroll to process the required ones. Yeah. So yes, we can record, approve, track, working time and absences and send it to payroll, ensure compliance, ensure local regulations, and on top of it, each company might have its own policy and how we can cater to accommodate these policies. Yes. OK, to the main agenda for today. So like I said again, let me reiterate. Our aim today is to understand what are the capabilities of the system when we offer employee central time off the core HR module that comes with SAP success factors, which gives us the option to have an absence management in place, to have a attendance management in place, and you know, be compliant. And additionally, we will also see time tracking as a separate module, which requires additional licensing from SAP. And why do we have to take time tracking? And what benefits does time tracking bring to the table to go on an additional license fee, right? So this is what we will focus on today. OK, so to start with, let's concentrate only on the core system capabilities, which is employee central. And for this, let me navigate to the system. I hope it's still locked in. 42 seconds right on time. OK, as I was saying. The. System. I will now log in to Monica. I have the profile opened. I will now go to the time management section. So here, as I can see, it gives me a good overview of the system capability of the time solution in the core system. So what do we have? We have the attendance module, which 
in a quick snapshot tells you, you know, how many leaves you have. I have 25 days of vacation, five days of extra vacation and so on. And I can quickly see what leaves I've applied and what is the status of those leaves. Is it approved or is it pending with the approver and so on? And I will not dig deep into uh, the absence module because the topic for today is timesheet, but still uh, as a quick overview, the admin gets a good overview on, you know, what is the employee's uh, attendance or uh, absence looks like, the leaves that he has applied, and what is the current status of these leaves, and their accounts and so on, right? But let's concentrate more on timesheet for the session today. Yes, I am going to click on go to timesheet. Come on, so many pop-ups today. I hope my screen is still visible. Yes, yes, thanks. OK, so as an employee, I have clicked on timesheet. Let me take a week where I've set some examples. OK, so for the current week or for the previous week, employees planned working time was 32 hours and the recorded working time shows 42 hours. In this example, what we are trying to show is now let's try and understand the two different types of recording time. One being the positive recording in which we will ask the employees to enter the start time and end time uh, for the working time. Uh, two, the most preferred option with white collar population is the negative time recording or simply capturing the deviations. While capturing deviations, we can have different methods or different naming conventions to capture this. And what we have used today is a simple example wherein we capture the time based on uh, certain different categories. It can be working time. It can be overtime for cash. When I say overtime for cash, it means the overtime recorded here has the ability to go to pay payroll directly and payroll you know pays the amount right and additionally you can also have something like overtime for time bank so based on the company policy when employee records something for a for a time of in lieu they can record overtime for the same and it then gets collected as a time bank and can be utilized as a leave type which can be availed as a time of in lieu yes okay so now if an employee goes to the system, sees the current week, plans to record time. Let's say he has recorded overtime for cash, and this is this is something that we can design based on the company needs. It need not be a overtime cash. It need not be a overtime for time bank. Uh, it can be something different. We can make the system automatically decide based on the hours entered. For example, I enter time from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. we can then decide 5 to uh, you know 8 becomes overtime for cash in a premium rate so all these combinations are possible and that's what we are trying to show in the valuation results here and what you see in the valuation results is purely something that you know uh, is based on all the needs requirements that we have for example, in this, I've tried to show uh, OT or uh, overtime on a public holiday captured separately in the same week. Uh, Non-working day captured in the same week, which means on a Sunday, the employee has worked two hours. So the categorization happens this way and we can make it more meaningful. It need not be NWD and you know, it need not be a puzzle. The employees, uh, we, we as administrators decide what should be shown finally to the employees. I have tried to show all the elements or all the calculations and valuations that we have done here so that it gives us the pure visibility on the calculation that happens in the back end. Uh, but we can control on what we show to the employee and how meaningful we make the self-service capability so that when the employee records the time, he gets to clearly see on the same page on how his overtime is being bifurcated and he can also then see how the time bank, uh, you know, or the time off in lieu, as we call it, uh, gets added week on week. So yes, I recorded time individually for each day on different categories. I can see the valuations, uh, all valuations as an administrator and, and, and particular valuations, what makes sense for an employee to be shown to the employee. 
and check the calculations again. If I am good, I can click on submit. So in the system, uh, in success factors, we call it as a weekly timesheet. Uh, the system has the capability to uh, submit the timesheets on a weekly basis. And there are several features which which will enhance the experience here. Uh, for example, if a user is on a long leave, uh, there are possibilities where we can automatically submit the timesheet uh, uh, when, when they are not around. Uh, and additionally, system gives you a clear indication of the status if the current week is to be submitted or it's pending for approval so that you can go back and then you know trace between the weeks on what is approved and what is not. Uh, and we can control in a way that only approved uh, you know, uh, records then flow to your time bank or time off in lieu. So after the approval, you get to see your leave balance of the time off in lieu having certain amount. And as in when you use it, the system will then show you how much is used here as well. Uh, so the absence module and the attendance module, as we see, is kind of integrated, I would say, in, in the system. So when you apply leave, automatically the leave also reflects here. <clears throat> we will have an example where we can see that as well for another user. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yes. And then if there are company policies or if there are legal policies for certain countries wherein the absence is also included because we have seen interesting uh, scenarios uh, when we had some implementation around Sweden, wherein the sick leave uh, has certain uh, valuation requirements. The sick leave is also inputted as one of the valuation criteria on how, how the you know, uh, time is split and then sent to payroll. So in those scenarios, we can also have the absence reflected here and being part of your valuation results and process to the payroll. Yes, so yeah. Okay, quick overview on this. Let me just go back to the slides to make sure we've not missed anything. And back three slides. Wonderful. I should have reduced the animations, I think. Okay, cool. So yes, we saw Employee Central Timesheet, the core system, what it has to offer, and how an employee can record time. And the recorded time can be positive time, meaning we can ask the employees to record start time and end time. The recorded time can be deviations for white collars, as we mostly see in the market. And we can design the valuations for better self-service capabilities and send it to payroll. Okay. And additionally, we also have the same features available in mobile, which means an employee can apply leave uh, using mobile, see the balance overview in mobile, check for approvals in mobile, being a manager or a HR admin. And additionally, you know, check your timesheet and the status of the same. So all these features are available in mobile as well, which then makes the experience better. Let me try and quickly share the mobile version. Just give me a second. Okay, share. Share screen. Start podcast. Okay. Yes, looks good. Thank you. So the same person of Monica has logged into mobile and it gives a good overview, some homepage tiles to perform some activities. And Monica is a manager, so there are some approval spending. As you can see, a quick approval is spending for sick leave from a team member. Which I can go into the details, check the details, and approve. Yes, the system also has a good feature in the absence management, which is called as team absences. Being a manager, I don't have to cross check every time if someone else in the team also is on leave on the same period. 
uh, for sick leave it doesn't really uh, make any sense but for vacation yes you need to plan it with your team members so now currently it tells me automatically saying zero team members or zero of the other team members are absent during this time which makes my approval process easier or my decision easier okay i have good overview on the complete system but let's stick to the topic clicking on the menu and i have the options of time off and time sheet to select so quickly on time off yes time off is absence module so i can see that i have sick leave which is approved already i have a public holiday which is coming summer break and i have maternity leave that's being approved Team absences gives me a quick overview on who is absent when. So that also helps me plan my leave. And I have a button on the top which can then give me the option to select new leave type. From the list of leave types that I have. Including time off in lieu if I have the balance accumulated. I select a particular leave type, select the start date, end date, and then I request for the leave. Yes, good. This is the absence module. Quick look into the timesheet, which is the attendance module. Okay, so. I can see a leave has been planned. <clears throat> leave has been planned, and there's a public holiday on Friday with a star mark on it. Oh, no. Okay. So let me see a week summary. I can see the week summary. I can click on a particular day, and I can start the new recording. It can be working time. It can be business travel, or it can be a category that we define that makes sense for the company. Yes. Good. Now I have to figure out how to stop the sharing. And. Go back to the presentation. Yes, so we're back to the slideshow. Oh no. Come on. Yes. OK, so now. Topic number two, time tracking. Uh, again, reiterating the fact that. The demo that we saw until now for users who have used success factors before. The core system, which is called as Employee Central, comes with certain functionalities and features for both absence management and attendance management. And that's what we saw in a quick snapshot now. The topic time tracking in itself has certain additional features on top of uh, what we have seen so far, which again is an additional licensing, an additional cost involved here so let's carefully evaluate what this additional features brings into the table right so with time tracking of course you can record administer and evaluate time uh, across multiple devices and and it becomes more flexible and it's covering all your local laws and regulations and collective labor agreements and we get the digital punch clock so after the covid era it was very much required that we have uh, you know we get away from the time terminals that commonly people use everyone uses and to get from a or get to a more secure version right so from there in the time tracking module it gives you the ability to clock in clock out punch in punch out using your web version which is shown here in a beautiful laptop where you can click on clock time and then press on clock time option. So this will then, you know, automatically take the time that you're clocking in 
and you can again click on clock time, which will give you options to take a break or we can have the configuration to define automatic breaks and it all depends upon the. Regulations, correct. So again, the same uh, shown quickly in our mobile version. So how you can open the clock in version, click on clock in or tell us that you no, know, you want to take a short break or you go for a lunch break. So then it eventually gets captured. So the last uh, you know, uh, mobile version that you can see says nine o'clock clock in, 12.30 lunch, half an hour lunch, but, and he's back to clock in again. He's in a very ideal employee, as I can see, and he clocked out at 17.30. Yes. So based on the clock in and clock out, the system then is capable to run all the valuations that we have seen. As we call technically, these are time events. So based on the time events, uh, we can then define the valuations on how the automatic breaks could behave. What is the minimum expected time that he has to work from a clock in clock out perspective? And what happens if he clocks in very early in the morning? Is it considered as a premium uh, overtime? Certain group of employees, even if they clock in early in the morning or late in the night, it is automatically considered as time off in lieu. So all these combinations are possible uh, on how you then define or group your employees and then have it in place, right? Okay. Okay. So clock in, clock out feature. Number one, you get from from time tracking, and the second feature that you get on time tracking is the GPS location capture capability. What does it mean? So just a note here, this feature along with time tracking is only available on the mobile version for obvious reasons for now, uh, which means if an employee clocks in, the feature uh, in your mobile is capable to capture the location. Of course, when you allow to capture location, it, it captures your location and Let's you know, or you can have a concept of geofencing if you really have something like that, right? Let's say your workforce is involved in working from a project location, and you want to track when they clock in from the project location. And in those scenarios, it makes sense to have a GPS location capture capability with a geofencing, you know, option. What does geofencing mean? You can say from this particular location radius. If the employee comes in and clocks in, it it means that he has clocked in from project site A, but outside this location, it really means that he has clocked in like work from home, right? So this again depends on how we best utilize based on the workforce or different workforce needs that we have. Just to reiterate again, this particular feature is only available on the mobile version of the time tracking module. Yes. And the most important feature of the time tracking module is the cross midnight recording. So cross midnight recording is possible only when you have time, tra time tracking licensing. So when you record time, let's say from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. next day, it then system then, you know, classifies as cross midnight, checks your work schedule, does all the premium. As you can see in the screenshot, you have a night shift premium, uh, you know, that's been classified. And it can then send the results to payroll, of course, after approval accordingly. Yes. OK, so there can be questions on, you know, uh, as an employee, yes, you have the mobile version as a as a manager. Yes, you have the approval versions. Uh, what happens if clock in clock outs are missed? What happens if a clock out are missed? And all these basic questions. Uh, yes, it uh, it is possible for an administrator to track this to get notifications, to get alerts and 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 kind of have an overview on tracker saying that, you know, for this week, how many people have missed, you know, clock outs, talk to them, figure out, talk to their managers or ha managers having the access to correct these, uh, you know, entries uh, by themselves, right? So all these capabilities are also additionally available in the system. Yes. So single record approval. This is also an additional feature that comes along with time tracking. Like I told you before, if you remember the timesheet, the weekly timesheet that we saw, as an employee, when you go and submit a weekly timesheet, it goes for an approval 
the approver gets to see the overview of the complete week and what time you have entered and what the calculation results in and he can send it back and forth uh, to have to have kind of a proper decision and then and approve or decline the same there is also an option which is called a single record approval which comes with time tracking what does single record approval mean is when you take a week let's say you travel or you go for a training in two days of the week and the travel approval or the business travel in particular as an approval lies with a different person not just your manager we can have the single record approved by this particular approver and then only being able to submit the time sheet again you have a weekly time sheet in which you are recording your weekly time and on a single day you have a business travel or you have a training that you attend outside the office and for this particular case you need an approval from a different approver and system can be designed or system can accommodate this request in which we can make the system send this business travel alone to the particular approver and wait for it to be approved until it's not approved you will not be able to submit the weekly time sheet yes yes so this is what we have for a time tracking uh, you know additional features you can quickly see the system as well let me okay share screen again but still in So for this example, we have Peter Prath. Okay, beautiful profile. He has two assignments. All those are good. Sticking to this scenario now. Going to timesheet. He's planned for eight hours. Okay, so. He gets to clock in and clock out. Working time and break is configured here. And how does it work? One sec. Go to buddy. Okay. Or I have some examples already on the week of March 17th. Yes. Okay. So this is an example with an automatic break in it, which means the user has clocked in and clocked out. And the rule for the dynamic break is mentioned here, which means system will automatically give you a 30 minutes break for every six hours of working time. And it will give you a 45 minutes break for every nine hours of working time. So that's what we can see. The employee is simply clocked in, clocked out eight to five. System has added a break. And additionally, you can see all these valuations here. So this is an automated solution in which the employee simply clocks in, clocks out, and based on what clock in, clock out we have received and the automatic calculation of breaks and certain conditions like if it's a non-working day, working day, or a public holiday system then calculates multiple valuations. And again, we have the concept of time bank here. Yes, that brings us to end of demonstrating the features of success factors with time tracking and without time tracking. Any questions? We can take and uh, handing it over back to Nikolai, or I can quickly also show the capabilities of integrations. That's possible if you have not seen it. We're running out of time. Yes, success factors has the capability to still integrate with your third party terminals. Uh, let me do a slideshow. Yes, it can be integrated through APIs. If it's API capable, we can push the data to timesheet and have a seamless calculation in success factors. And an end-to-end -end time. Sharing, Vincat. 
<laughs> because Am we I don't not? see your screen. Oh no. Um, and we we uh, might also want to see uh, something about uh, reporting. Yes. Better enough. Yes, please. Thank you. Was it all along that I was not sharing? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was just now just, we see the slides, so all good. Thank you. Okay. So, like I was saying, the system has the capability to integrate with a third-party terminal device. So, if you have the setup already, uh, which is API enabled, we can still send the data to success factors and have your calculations in one place. Yes, and from an end-to-end -end scenario perspective, you have the time and payroll system connected to each other. So all your time relevant data, including your holidays, your schedules, your absences, the quotas involved, the time recordings can be sent to payroll and the payroll system getting connected to a finance for a GL posting or a third party system to the government reporting site is also depicted here. And always the interesting part analytics. Yes. So as we know, the key personas that we have selected for today are at least the main important personas are the employee, administrator and the manager. For an employee, we saw an overview of how the mobile version helps to clock in, clock out or, you know, uh, book for an absence easily. Additionally, for the managers, we have seen how the approval helps from a mobile version, quick approve. Complete overview on how many approvals he has. And as a manager, uh, overview on what kind of analytics he can then get. So all the analytics that you want to share with the manager can then be shown to the manager. And in the home page dashboard, he gets to see the overview of the timesheet entry for his team members. And what is the percentage of, uh, let's say, uh, travel or training that his team has gone, or what is the overall overtime that he's uh, you know, team has spent, and which which gives us which gives the manager good insights on how to then manage the work accordingly. Yeah, and of course for administrators, the flexibility in terms of having uh, you know access to all your time accounts uh, for absence management or or the payout or the time collectors as we as we call it uh, in terms of your timesheet is also available in one place wherein. Uh, administrator or the time administrator gets to handle a time alert, a time account, or all these concepts put together in one particular screen, manage and use it. Yeah. And of course, for the leaders also, we can have you know specific dashboards and analytics created based on area. As in this example, we can see the time trend for all time periods or at least a selected time period. So what's the percentage of you know distribution in terms of the time that's tracked. Yes, good. Not in detail, but a quick overview on, you know, system is still capable of giving you good analytics based on the user who's seeing it. Thank you, yes. Venkat, for uh, for that uh, walkthrough. Um, we uh, had uh, now uh, the slides disappeared. I think they are causing some uh, some troubles today. But but a takeaway of this is that um, it's also a question in the chat. What about implementation? What about licenses? So as said, um, the timesheet part and time off part is covered by your employee central license. If you want to do further time tracking with clock in, clock out and advanced time valuations and cross midnight and geofencing, then you need the time tracking license. Does it have to be a big implementation project? No, uh, we are doing this using our best practice package, which is a predefined solution that it allows you to uh, first of all, become compliant with a best practice solution in an efficient implementation methodology, which we call three steps to cloud, which is an accelerated methodology of implementing uh, SAP success factors. So no, it doesn't have to be a big implementation project. Uh, feel free to reach out to, to John or I uh, afterwards to get an individual meeting and we would be happy to provide you with a quote. I also know, John, we have some questions in the, the Q&A. We have lots and lots of questions. 
it's an, uh, I think it's fair to say that this morning's session has definitely resonated with people. Uh, even from the feedback on the polls, this appears to be something that uh, organizations are anxious to uh, address this year. I'm conscious of the fact that we've implemented this already uh, at Arla Foods, uh, Epsom Germany, uh, Copenhagen Business School. Uh, this is a very, very hot, hot topic uh, at the moment. Uh, and we do have questions. Uh, I don't think we're going to get around to all of them is the honest answer, just purely due uh, to time constraints. Uh, good question here, and I'm going to start from the, the start and we'll go down. Um, and this is a good question uh, from Philip. What if users forget to clock in and clock out? Uh, is it possible to register in the past? Uh, that's a question for you, Venkata, I think. Yes, quickly, yes, there is a possibility and we can define uh, uh, what we do about it and who can edit the uh, missed clock in clock outs. If it can be managers, it can be HR administrators, we can give them the right access to understand what happened and then clock in or clock out, which we call as manual entry into the system. And additionally, we can also decide as a company how many weeks they can go behind to make these corrections because during payroll week, we normally don't want people to make corrections, so we can have the timesheet locked during that period and also let them only you know, go back three weeks or four weeks on however we decide to go and make the required corrections. Thanks, Venkata. That's a very comprehensive answer. Uh, good question as well from Sitzel. Excuse my pronunciation, Sitzel. Uh, in timesheets, and again, I think this is for you, Venkata, can you register overtime uh, and your on duration or can you have more detail level of registration with start time and an end time yes so sorry if i'm not uh, uh did i mention this topic no probably not okay so yes there are two types of capturing time duration based and clock time based we can decide in a single system or a single environment, we can decide the particular group of employees only recording duration. For example, I can simply come to the system and say I've worked overtime four hours. Or we can decide the employee has to enter start time and end time. If we have calculations based on the time that they enter, it can be a late night, early morning. So both the possibilities are available. We have something called as time variant, which can define which employee uh, group is allocated to the clock time variant or a duration variant as it's possible. Right, and I think we need to be mindful of this morning in the sense that what you've seen is a very, very high level uh, overview of time management, time tracking. Uh, we've really just skimmed the surface, but there's a huge amount more to this. Uh, and again, to go back, listen to what Mr. Yanning said is that we're more than happy to uh, facilitate individual sessions. Uh, because the reality being every organization is different uh, and every organization has different requirements. Really good question here as well from Sana. Thank you for, you for the question, Sana. Uh, I think I can answer this one myself. What is expected uh, cost for implementation uh, for EC time management, both timesheets and absence when EC is already in use? Again, Sana, it's a really good question, but it's not something that I could really answer now in the sense that I would need to have further requirements in the size of, you know, what is your size of your organization? What are your requirements? Uh, you know, where are you located uh, geographically and so forth? But again, happy to pick that one offline. Uh, good question here as well. Uh, and this one is for Sana. Uh, and I'll, I'll direct this to you, Venkat, as well, if you don't mind. Uh, the organization that Sana is working is that they're operating in one country. Uh, that there is a separate timesheet in use with only working time data. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to use only EC time off to manage their absence without timesheets? That's a big question. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. you can manage uh, to have only absence module in, in use without timesheet. You can have timesheet alone in use. You can have a combination of absence and attendance in use. Uh, Yes, all possibilities are possible. And again, with different countries involved, we have options to have profiles defined, which means the same system can be used for different countries to behave differently for both absence and attendance management. Great question. <clears throat> Apologies, uh, we just ran out of time. Uh, there is loads of other questions uh, here, but listen, we will endeavor to re reply to all of them. Uh, for me, 
uh, you know, as I've said already, this is definitely a very, very hot topic. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, uh, Nikolai, who's basically responsible for Gaudi's SAP success factors practice uh, to wrap things up. Uh, I think due to the level of demand, and this is something that we'll probably look at covering again, I think, uh, in the month of April. But finally, just for me, listen, thank you to everyone who took the time out this morning. I hope you found it of value, uh, beneficial. If you'd like to know more about the solution, please feel free to reach out to myself or Nikolai. More than happy to set up a more tailored uh, session for your needs and so forth. But uh, thank you. Uh, Nikolai, over to you, please. Thank you, John. And uh, what I think we'll do is uh, answer the the questions from the Q and A on on the slides um, as well. And then we'd be happy to set up individual sessions uh, for you to go over what would be needed to implement this in your specific scenario. We'd also be very happy to dive uh, further into it one on one with you. And yes, we will do a follow up webinar in the coming months, as there is also a question about an overview of time valuation and time tracking compared to the good old RP time zero zero. Very important topic when you are going to evaluate your roadmap for moving to EC payroll at some point potentially, and what do you do about time there? So that will also follow up on. Uh, feel free to reach out to to John Venkat or I directly in case you want to to chat. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, we hope you find it uh, valuable and insightful. And thank you Venkat for uh, for the walkthrough of this. Uh, please reach out. And uh, again, thank you very much for joining today. Great. And just, I suppose, finally for me, as I stated at the beginning of the call, uh, the session has been recorded. Uh, we are happy to share the recording with you, uh, and we will do so over the coming days. Uh, and we're also happy to share the slides with you. Uh, but again, thank you to Venkata uh, and Nikolai, and uh, wishing you all thank you, John. Uh, a really good rest of the day and a very, very happy Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter. Thank you very much, all. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.